Hello everyone and thanks for tuning into Terry Scully's June and Summer 2023 forecast brought to you via Gav's Weather Vids. Summer 2023 and June preamble and prediction from drought to flood to the seas of contrast. Despite the somewhat pessimistic outcome of the analogue spreadsheet, a generally front-loaded summer seems to be on the cards this coming season. However, due to the difficulties, I decided to take a closer look at some of the individual items on the spreadsheet, particularly appertaining to more worldwide factors, as well as those closer to home. A study of summers following wet springs was revealing. Of the 20 going back to 1877, 18 of the June saw either average or below normal rains, with 15 of them drier than normal. This ties in with the current trend, although a little early, there was also a strong bias for August to be the wettest month. Early springs with both similar CT and England and Wales rainfall similar to the present were 1963, 1992, 2005 and 2007. But I've taken out 1963 coming after the severe hail winter. We know that the summer of 2007 was exceptionally wet, but the Junes of 1992 and 2005 were both drier than average and uh, had average temperatures. 1992 was very dry, but with a wet July and a very wet August following. Summers on the current phase of the solar cycle with similar polarity or odd-numbered years were 1956, 1957, 1958, 1979, 1980, 1998, 1999, 2000 and 2022. Of the summers that followed, only last year could be classed as a fine hot summer, but we lose the dryness of June somewhat as only four were dry and two of them average. Of the remaining solar cycle close matching years with the wrong polarity 1967, 1968, 69, 89, 1990, 1991, 2011, 2012 and 2013, we got a similar result. Only three of the nine Junes were drier than average with August not quite so wet. We currently have an extension of the Azores High that tends to occur approximately every seven years to the northwest of the country. If a ridge is over or just to the south, it can produce some significant summers, such as 76, 83, 89, 90, 95, 97, etc. But if a ridge is to the west or north, as is the case at the moment, we can get chilly winds from the north or northeast bringing the opposite. So with 15 out of 20 Junes dry after wet springs and a wet August following, we seem to have on the whole a trend for a steady deterioration in the weather through the coming summer. Looking further afield into more worldly events in the years on the spreadsheet help clarify the situation a little more. In summers, with years transitioning into El Nino, or those that switch from La Nina to El Nino, we got a similar result to those following wet springs. Of the 13 years, 10 of the Junes were either average or drier than normal, with 10 of the August either average or wet. July tended to be the warmest month, with a couple of hot summers included in more recent years. And with the current spate of warming putting energy into the atmosphere, heavy rains or thunderstorms later in the summer could lead to some flooding. Even more striking were the results obtained from the years that had a similar SOI sequence and a negative LEO similar to, similar to the present. Of five years comprising 1951, 1957, 2001, 2006 and 2008, all five Junes were dry with four of the August wet. None of the Junes or Julys were cool, so again we have a definite trend for a somewhat well, somewhat of a front-loaded summer. Brief heat waves seem most likely in July when 30 Celsius plus could easily be reached, but with broadly increasingly unsettled conditions as the summer wears on. The north and west on a whole should be drier relative to normal through the summer, with the south and some eastern areas wetter. We could see some huge temperature contrast, particularly in the north and east, due to winds occasionally from a northeasterly quarter bringing cooler weather to those parts, mostly in the first half of June and probably during August. Moving on to June, the current models are suggesting little overall change in the current weather pattern until towards mid-month. I see no reason to disagree with the west generally seeing the best of the sunshine. 
Indeed, there'll be some very warm, even hot afternoons at times, while eastern and some central parts are occasionally plagued by low cloud off the North Sea. This will bring mist and lower temperatures and drizzle or light rain to some parts, in complete contrast to what might have been a glorious sunshine and warm the day before. As we go through the second week, the south and southwest may see a few sharp showers cropping up in an otherwise mainly dry first half of the month. The second half of June should see winds turning into a southwesterly quarter, bringing somewhat more changeable conditions towards or around the summer solstice. A very warmer hot spell is possible, followed by heavy showers and some thunderstorms before chilly winds from the north or northeast perhaps return before months end. But another alternative and more common scenario is for winds between west and north bringing occasional showers, although rainfall amounts in the south should be relatively small, with Scotland and the north tending to be breezier and more generally unsettled at times. However, with the Azores high reaching north this year, the most likely scenario is the first one. A drier than normal June is foreseen, particularly in the first half. The best of any weather will often be in the north and west in the first half of June and maybe again later in the month. The position should then reverse with the best conditions in the east and south from around or after big bump until the final week. Sunshine totals are likely to be enough above normal in the north and west but closer to normal in other parts. Parts of the northeast, particularly towards the coast, may be duller than usual due to cloud and threat times rolling in off the North Sea. Today's goalie, 31st of May, 2022. If you would like to see more forecasts from Terry and from Gab, please can you subscribe to our channel. And we'll be back with more very soon. Thanks for watching.